Alpha, you know what I need. Teenagers with attitude. That's correct, Alpha. Teenagers with attitude. Welcome to Teenagers with Attitude, a show where a bunch of grown adults sit around and talk about teenagers in tightly colored clothing, fighting monsters, or in this case, uh, turning fly-like into horrible human abominations, you know, that kind of thing. It's one of those episodes. I'm Zach, and joining me this week, we've got Mike. Hey! It's Mike, and that's it. It's one of those this time. That's fine. Yeah, you know, yeah. I understand that we're all adults and we have stuff to do, and also some of us have weak constitutions like Simon and get sick all the goddamn time, but that's okay. It's no big deal. <laughs> are, you, are, are, you, are you making fun of your friend for being susceptible to disease? No, not really. It's just one of those, uh, you know, you know he's got a just... child, right? Do you know how, 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 like, disease ridden a child is? <laughs> yeah, he's got, he's got two children. And, but whose fault was that? <laughs> I think, obviously, true, it was true. his. I mean, uh, yes, no. he, re- he really should have considered his obligation to the Power Rangers podcast yes, that, before that, he decided yes, to have that, offspring. That he does for free for no compensation. He should have thought of that first. Anyway, no, I don't care. I'm doing a fun riff, Mike. That's what we do here. It's Riff City. Is that it's what not, we do? Oh we're, oh, we're going to Riff City? Yeah, we're going to Riff City. It's all right, not yeah, like- all right. Everybody pack up your bags, load into the car. We're, we're taking a road trip to Riff City. Uh, Eric, hit the theme. We're going to Riff City. City. Riff City is is absolutely one of the cities from F Zero. I it has to be right. Like I'm no, pretty sure. No, uh, that's the thing is as as like uh, as as much of that series as aesthetic leans into like rock music and and stuff like that. There's the 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 songs like the, like the places don't really have names like that. There's just kind of Mute City and then a place called Silence. And then all of the That's other not, places just have kind of generic sci-fi names. Silence is a creepy thing to name a place. I wouldn't go there. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, this is a Power Rangers podcast, in case you couldn't guess. Sometimes we talk about F-Zero, which... I mean, Captain Falcon could be a Sixth Ranger easy. I mean, he, he is he's very Kamen Rider-esque. Yes, so. that's true. He's got the knee even, which is like damn near a rider kick. Uh, it's a, it's a rider kick with the numbers filed off. Oh, he actually even has a falcon kick, doesn't he? There you go. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. I he's forgot. got a falcon kick and a falcon punch. It's very so. important. <clears throat> um, but speaking of uh, of falcons, well, I guess it's a hawk. Uh, so if you well, oh, hold on, I have to say the name of the the segment. This is our new segment. It's called. Mm-hmm. Uh, are, you, are you waiting for me to help you? Or? My, no, I'm trying to think of it. M- 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 more, no, 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 more, st- no. Back up, back up, back up. There's another syllable before that. Uh, mighty ter per per. Wait, per? What's ter. the per? What's the per for? Ter t. Oh, ter turborf turborf. Nope, I got nothing. Turborf. 
fact. Turbor new. fact new Zeom space nimble. Is that it? Tabor, Tabor Fact New Space Yomnimal. There we go. Perfect. It just makes so much sense. I think I actually for- forgot space last time I was on. I could it's be fine. The, the, I, you know, I wanted to go for the joke of just saying the what we did last we or last uh, season, but then saying in space. But that won't work, obviously, because we're going to keep doing it <laughs> until it's just impossible. So <laughs> uh, that's fine. But yeah, we have a little bit of news this week. Uh, One of the interesting things that's been coming out of the Power Rangers Battle for the Grid game, uh, Mm -hmm. along with the the fact that just it's continuing to be updated sort of against all odds and people seem to still be liking it, is that they decided, we we talked about this last week or maybe two weeks ago, they uh, have gone ahead and decided to bring over the... uh, uh, pa- the Power Rangers slash Street Fighter mashup. So Ryu and Chun Li are going to be coming over. They mm-hmm. put out they put over a tra- put out a trailer showing Ryu is the Crimson Hawk and uh, uh, Chun Li is the Blue Phoenix Ranger, uh, and those looked cool, good costumes. But also, but recently, I think yeah, this was today as of of recording two hours ago. They announced that also. Ryu will be getting something I'm sending to you now. Uh, yup. Oh, wow. Uh, Ryu will, will be getting a Ryu Angel Grove class of 93 skin in which he is wearing a, a black leather jacket, his normal uh, headband and gloves, and then like black jeans and combat boots, and most importantly, a red and black checkered flannel tied around his waist. It fucking rolls. It's so good. <laughs> they just they just said like, let's just make him look like Jason. Let's just well, make him look like Jason. Well, it's it's Jason, but also he's got leather, which like only if you'll recall, it's only like evil bad mind people. control. Yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> only he's, bad he's like, people wear that. He's evil mind control, Jason. Or he's friends with Bulk and Skull. One of these two options is is possible. Oh um, wow! Yeah, you know what? I could I could I could see Ryu uh, go into Angel Grove and like Bulk and Skull trick him into thinking like they they they're they're ready to learn martial arts from a true master. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, and because obviously Ryu uh, is Japanese, he's an exchange student, so they're going to try to take advantage of that because they're real unscrupulous in the first season, and mm-hmm. uh, and then they all hang out, and eventually Ryu gets hit in the face with a pie. That's yeah. just how it goes. <laughs> eventually, but, he figures out what they're up to and bails, and they think like, "Oh, they're winning our only chance to learn karate." And then Dan Hibiki shows up. Oh my god, I would love a 90s uh, clothes Dan Hibiki. Also, I'm positive I, I said it wrong. It's Ryu, right? I'm pretty sure it's not Ryu. I, I, I've, I've said it Ryu my entire life. It might be Ryu. I think fighting game people might be mad at me. I, I'm sorry. I apologize. I don't know. But in any case... Um, I think Japanese people might be mad at you. Well, that is it a Japanese just, name or is it, is it fake? I don't know. I... No, I mean it's for sure a Japanese name, but I don't know if like the pern- uh, this we've gone too deep. I don't know. He might okay, be Ryu yeah. or Ryu or something else. The point is, it looks great. I love it. Um, the thing that this immediately made me sad about is being like, oh, but but why don't we get to play as like Zach Taylor in street clothes? I want that now. Like, give me give me plain clothes, Tommy. Uh, cause that, that would, would be, look- that would be funny. Yeah. Like actually, just- yeah, that's a, re- that's a real good question. Like part of the uh, appeal of Power Rangers, like part of really the only thing that super, uh, separates it from the Sentai is, you know, is the, the footage of the American actors and like, yeah, right. I, I want to, I want Billy in his fucking ridiculous season one overall. That, so, so like, I was kind of joking, but seriously, if they make a sequel to this game, because I know that it's doing quite well in terms of critical and uh, like staying power in the community, um, like if especially if you want to tap even harder into that nostalgia, you know how you do that, right? Is you you give the '90s fashion to everybody. <laughs> 
And uh, I mean, yeah, like I understand why they didn't do that. It's because, you know, you make the model and then you change the helmet and the color and you're done. Um, I'm sure there's more to it than that. But you know what I mean? The Power Rangers costumes are uh, probably easier to edit than full clothing on a, a 90s kid. But it, it it would be really cool if they they could do that, uh, especially for you know, the Power Rangers characters. And then you could do that fun thing since it's uh, like legacy stuff and you've got stuff from newer people. Some of the characters are dressed in like 2007 clothes, you know, and or, or current. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's like a fun uh, uh, way to way to it, differentiate it, 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 it everybody. It could be a fun way to make like, uh, you know, and I don't I don't know how far the game goes into this because I don't pay super close attention to the game. Like, here's Red Ranger. And then here's the Jason costume. And then right. here's the Rocky costume. Yeah, you know? totally. Yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. Um, but yeah, so I just thought that was fun. I think uh, it's neat that... I I think it's kind of cool, actually, that at least this um, GameRant.com, uh, uh, which I don't really know. I, I found two articles there. And uh, what was the th- other one? Uh... Scre- or no CBR um, both talk both seem to imply and I don't know for sure but that that he's not gonna have his normal costume like Ryu in this game will or Ryu will not have your karate gi which I think is kind of neat it's like nope he's he's a power Rangers character in this one so <laughs> he yeah, looks sure. like this I don't, like, I don't know how much I trust either of those sources but sure like, but I, I think that'd be kind of neat it also made me realize that uh uh they'll probably give Chun Li one too which is exciting so that'll that be fun. would be good that would be good I'm I'm excited about that uh so so yeah I I just thought that was a a neat little touch and there you go that's our news for this week yeah uh, what was the name of the segment again oh man you mother uh okay <laughs> it's Turbor more fact newsio space nimal is that it that's pretty close no but i'm ready to move on <laughs> okay yay i've i've won through attrition <laughs> this is episode 14 of power rangers in space the beryllian sting and it opens on uh oh, jungle uh, actually what? hold on before before we get rolling could i give a couple of thoughts on the two episodes that i missed Yes, of course. Of course you may. Okay. Uh, Ashley's grandma is fucking insane, and it's genuinely terrifying. She's out of her goddamn mind. It's really a problem. I agree. And uh, I think I figured out what happens to uh, Pro- Professor Phenomenus in the end. Of You know, I don't want to get too ahead of it, because we're not that <laughs> far yet in the show. But I think I know what happens to him. What's that? Um, because, well, here's the thing. He built a ray gun that turns things evil, <laughs> and... You don't do that unless you yourself are evil. So clearly, he just dies when Zordon explodes. We've t- I've we talked about it on the episode. We talked about it last episode. We're going to talk about it again. The fact that Professor Phenomenus is an alien obsessed scientist, and he built a ray what makes things evil when you point at it is insane. It makes no sense. <laughs> it does it like. The the only other thing that he's done that that was really crazy was he made plutonium or used plutonium yeah, we, as we a fuel source. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at least uh, that's like okay, it's for a rocket. There's no reason to do this whatsoever. <laughs> well, here's the thing. So the evil ray had a good setting on it on the dial. Why why didn't he try that first? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. He I don't even think they say it in dialogue. You only see it on the thing, and it's just like okay, yeah. so you built a device that can turn things either good or evil, and the first thing you did was turn it all the way to the most evil setting. And Wait, shoot oh, it that's at something. that's the best part of it. That's the best part. I don't know how deep y'all got into the 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 mechanics of the the good evil ray. It's not a switch. It's a dial. No, it has, it's a dial. It, it has degrees from I, good to evil. <laughs> I don't think we mentioned it, and that's a good point. So if you turn it, uh, you know, like two. It, if you, you know, turn it like half, exactly halfway through, and zap somebody, do they become a centrist? Yeah, yeah. Or or uh, the those neutral aliens from the Futurama episode. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, so uh, Professor Phenomenus. Let, let me just say this. I hope that dude gets what's coming to him. He sucks. 
Uh, he is directly responsible, especially in the Evil Eyes episode. You saw it. How many people did he kill? Like, <laughs> uh, nobody. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, okay, fine. The, the robot just kind of chased him and Bulk and Skull the whole time. No, no, no. But then, it, but then, Astronoma uses it on the Delta Megasword with oh, that's true. The yeah, okay, yeah, he's, like he's a super. Bunch. <laughs> yeah, he he very he definitely has blood on his hands. Um, yeah. I will say this: I love I love the guy playing him. He does a great job. I wish he's he got prop. I it sucks that he's not in the credits because he's clearly just as much a part of the show as Bulk and Skull are at this point. Yeah, it, it it's a little weird that he's not, but he he's fun. I enjoy him uh as an actor even though his character is a psychopath. Uh but that said, uh this is episode 14, The Brilliant Sting. We open on a quote-unquote jungle planet. Uh which you know cuz there's some ferns around. Um and we've got uh TJ, Cassie, and Carlos uh looking for a distress signal. Uh, that they they have somewhere that's been sent out, and they find some Piranatron tracks, and they're like, "We're on no, the no, way." No, 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 no. We 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 got we got to go. We got to go in detail on this. I don't want to okay. slow things down too much, but we got to go into detail on this because uh, TJ gives this spiel about like, if Zordon's on this planet, we're gonna find him, and then Cassie goes, "Look, footprints," and my I guess my stupid Power Ranger watching brain just went, "Wait a minute, Zordon doesn't have feet." <laughs> He does it. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, there. Well, so the Zordon tracks would be like a big cylinder that had just been dragged, right? <laughs> yeah. like it would just be a big circle. <laughs> if he got out of his tube, it would just he'd just be like it'd be like tire treads. Yeah, exactly. But uh, no, instead, uh, it's Piranatron tracks. We cut over to um, uh, Ecliptor, who has an RC car remote. And he's like, haha, my false distress, it, distress signal is working perfectly. I don't know why you would need a fake distress signal. You could just use a distress signal and then kill them when they come. It's Well, I think a, it's a real distress signal, but he's saying fake. Sure. It's like there's no one in distress. So he, it's him and a bajillion uh, quant, quantrons? Quantrons, yes. Because uh, they were... Right, that's right. So they said... We see Piranatrons, and last we saw Zordon, he was with Divatox, so that would mean they were getting close. But so inst- did did Ecliptor borrow a Piranatron, or do they just have like a cast mold of <laughs> of a Piranatron's foot on <laughs> hand a, to make this footprint? That's a good point because they don't you don't see any Piranatrons, so I guess they just have a mold of a Piranatron foot because you know. You they, yeah, they just, they just have a fake Piranatron foot on the end of a stick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just like, just march it down the through the jungle. It's like, okay, yeah. this is going to be the perfect trap. Uh, so Ecliptor is getting ready to spring his trap. And uh, behind uh, behind him opens a portal and out steps this shithead uh, named Darkonda. And Darkonda is gross looking. He... He is a Venus flytrap bee man. Yeah, but also his flesh looks like melted in a way I don't like. He's a gross design. He's got like um I don't know, he's he looks like stitched together. Some of his his skin looks sort of frankensteined, but then his chest, yes, is like a open uh uh Venus flytrap over his over his pecs basically. And then he's it's, just got- it's a very it's a very compelling like gross evil monster design it, and it it yeah, really it, contrasts like very well with like how fucking like cyberspace looking Ecliptor is. Yes, that's true. Ecliptor is very like uh uh VR um inspired obviously c- from Mega Ranger and this guy looks like he was made in a evil scientist lab. Uh maybe Professor yeah. Phenomenus made him. Um Possibly. He, def- he definitely looks like he grew up in a test, uh, just fucking blender. Uh, so, so he walks up to Ecliptor, and it's like, check it out, Ecliptor, I'm a grower, not a shower. And then his sword goes, <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, he has this little sword at, that just, That like, becomes a big sword. Yeah, it becomes oh, a really big sword. It really just grows into a normal sword for this show. It's just, it's, it starts as, a, as tiny. 
Yeah. And like they, they only do this shot because he does it again in the Sentai footage later, and they need to be like, yeah, this is a thing his sword can do. I guess. And yeah, so immediately Ecl- Ecliptor is like, hey, dude, cool. Fuck off. I hate you. You suck. Uh, I told you never to come around me. I have here, right here the restraining order. <laughs> Clearly, you can see it. Um, and basically, immediately you get the idea that uh, they've got a past and uh, Ecliptor does not like him. Um, very quickly, I want to take a, a extremely quick stop in the uh, Mega Ranger station because I did not watch it. However, uh, I Eric watched the episode... Um, and basically, he is. It, it, it's similar in this episode. Uh, uh, Ecliptor doesn't like him in the Sentai. He is uh, just real dirty. Um, he tricks the Red Ranger into punching a child at one point during the episode, which is pretty fucked up. Um, and he, like, fusions with another monster on their side and then they get shot with the like uh you know the the finishing move of the megazord and he splits and lets the other monster take the hit and get murdered so he's real nasty in the sentai as well he's he's just kind of a jerk in this one he's not as like i mean he does there's no children that get punched because it's power rangers um yeah but uh but yeah so they they're carrying that over at least. Uh he um has a big burlap sack and he says I wanted to see Astronoma's new new uh lackey basically and he says that and Ecliptor immediately attacks him uh and they have they sword clash and uh Ecliptor's like you fucking stay away from Astronoma or I'll kill you and that's really interesting. This is the first like inter bad guy conflict we've gotten in a while. Uh, so yeah, and usually it's been between like the main dudes. You know, it's it's been like yeah. Zed and Rita hating the Machine Empire and so on. And I know they just put out a uh, uh, a boom comic that that does a little bit with Astronema and Ecliptor, uh, and and I've heard that that's good. I haven't gotten the chance to read it yet, but in the show. Their relationship is a little weird. You never really know if Ecliptor is bo- is the boss or if Astronema is the boss. It sort of seems like it flips. Um, and and so their relationship's kind of interesting. And here you see him being like, hey, what the, f- what the fuck? Get away from Astronema. Um, but uh, be- they're interrupted by the Rangers showing up. Um, and Ecliptor is like, all right, I got to... Uh, set up this ambush. Uh, uh, Darkonda's like, ambushes are for chumps. <laughs> this is a dumb plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it really is great just the way uh, Darkonda's getting under uh, Ecliptor's skin. Like, just... He's yes. just fucking taunting this dude. He's like, <laughs> you, you're, you don't know shit from shit, you fucking cyber asshole. And it's it's cool. Be- the thing I like is that Ecliptor is like, just trying to ignore that he's there, which is kind of funny. <laughs> like he's just like, go away. I have to. I have to do bad guy things. Go away. <laughs> just um, pretend the bully isn't there. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Quantrons run out, and uh, the Rangers start fighting Quantrons. Uh, at this point, we go cut to the theme, and when we come back, uh, Darkonda opens his burlap lap sack and pulls out. Uh, this real gross um it's like a cocoon yeah cocoon looking thing it looks yeah so this like... is going to happen a few times in this episode apparently he, he's just got a few of these on hand he th- takes this cocoon thing throws it into the air and before it lands dramatically cuts it in half with his sword and a freaky alien bug comes out right and uh now to be fair because you're listening to a power rangers podcast what you might think Mike means by that is like a monster. No, it's a bug. I mean, it's big. It's like the size of your hand, but it is still a bug. Uh, yeah, it 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 is. It's a clearly a plastic prop, and it's weirdly colored. But like, yeah, it is just. It is a bug. It is not a and, bug man, not yeah. yet. But it is. It, it is a bug. Right, and it flies uh, at the Rangers. Uh, Ecliptor sees it and ducks. 
uh, and it lands right on Carlos's hand and takes a big old chomp. Uh, Carlos immediately freaks out. The bug, I think, dies like a bee. Yeah, they yeah they treat it like like the kinds of bees that die when they sting. Yeah, is um, is just like yeah. And the rangers uh, immediately pick up uh, uh, Carlos and teleport away. Uh, Ecliptor turns around to uh, uh, yell at Darkonda and say, like, hey, you caused them to run away. You lost me, my rangers. Uh, But Darkonda is already gone, so they also teleport away. Um, We cut up to the... uh, uh, the the mega ship and Carlos his arm is all fucked up. Uh, it's really gross looking. Yeah, they, they they took some they took some red and blue markers and they have drawn all over this man. They drew veins all up on him. It looks like uh, I don't know if anyone listening will have seen this, but it looks like Elon Musk's wife's dumb alien tattoo she got. Uh, it's just lines, but it it they, also just looks like Elon Musk the person. <laughs> yeah, but also, um, it's he does have like this. They put like a big, uh, like open wound looking thing, thing on him. For Power Rangers, it's fairly gross. Yeah, yeah. They also, they also like. I, I don't know if they like put some Vaseline or something on him, but he he spends the next few scenes looking very moist. <laughs> he's, he's he's real wet for a couple <laughs> a couple hours. Um, Andros uh is like. Uh, oh, it, or sorry, Carlos says, uh, I think it was some kind of bug. And Andros, who was not there, is like, oh, did it feel cold? And he, uh, Carlos is like, yeah, do you know about this? And Andros is like, no, I don't think so. Or maybe. And then he, like, motion, he head motions TJ into the hallway, uh, to talk to him in private, um, and make sure to stand directly in the open doorway so that Carlos can see that he's being talked about in private. Okay, uh, here's here's the thing. It, it this is actually really irresponsible of a uh, way for Andros to do this, you know, considering what his theory is. Long story short, uh, Carlos is going to werewolf into a bug monster, mm-hmm. and like knowing that that's probably what's going on, even if you don't have it one hundred percent yet. The the first thing you do is strap Carlos down and lock him in the room. Like yes. if you think he's going to turn into a bug monster, you 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 seal him off immediately and go look for the antidote. Yeah, that's the thing. Like you, you can, you, and I you can and I know they can it. do it because they do it later, <laughs> right? And and also you can explain it. You can you can put straps on him and be like, Carlos, I'm sorry. You're going to turn into a monster for the third time, I think, since you've been a power ranger. Yeah, but don't worry, I, ha- I have a theory on where to get the antidote, but we are going to have to strap you down. And Carlos, who is at this point a veteran of war, yes, you know, of weird alien space war, will certainly just be like, okay, guys, I trust you, good luck. You yeah. know? <laughs> like, there shouldn't be a conflict here. No, but instead he uh, secrets away TJ and they they whisper. And actually, you don't hear what's going on in this scene. But if you've watched it, Power Rangers, I mean, I guess it could be that he was going to die, but probably not. You, he's probably going to turn into a monster. Yeah, I mean, for, for all the nitpicking I'm doing about the way uh, Andros handles this, because, I mean, let's face it, he's a fictional character. He doesn't need to act like perfectly logically. It's whatever. Who cares? Like, this is a pretty well-constructed scene, all told. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. And then, uh, so, so, Dirk, um, Ecliptor up on the, uh, the Dark Fortress, he is, I-, I feel like both Ecliptor and Astronema are trying to be a little more quietly menacing than the other Power Rangers villains we've had so far who are mostly very over the top. We talked about it last episode some, but one of the things with quietly menacing that you have to do is they have to lose it sometime. And in this scene, I kind of like this. Ecliptor is just fucking, th- he's pissed. He's throwing uh, Quantrons against the wall and, and like, he's super angry. And I kind of like that because yeah. up till this and point. And Astronomer's even like, oh, you're always so calm and collected. What's gotten under your skin? Yeah, exactly. And and I kind of dig that. Uh, and he's like, something went wrong. And she's like, well, what happened? And he's like, don't you worry about it. Uh, I'm not going to tell you, <laughs> which is 
you know, a power play uh, it would maybe work, except that uh, Darkonda immediately shows up on the ship. Astronema is like, uh, who the hell are you? Um, and how did you get into my ship? Yeah, and he says that he's a bounty hunter. He says that he has met Astronema once, and uh, I don't know if this is supposed to be spoilers, but in the episode where uh, you flash back to... Uh, uh, it's super Caron, obvious that he's the one who kidnapped yeah, her yeah, when she yeah. was... Uh, That's yeah. correct. And you can even see him in the episode, like, through some bushes, basically. So uh, I don't know if that's supposed to be hidden, but I remember. Um, she says, I don't remember you. Uh, and uh, immediately Ecliptor is like, good, he's a traitor. He's a cheat. He's double crosser. And I always like when villains are like, yeah, but that guy's mean. Like, I don't like him. I know we, like, kill <laughs> and murder and steal, but that guy sucks. Like, we we specifically cannot trust him. Right. Um, and uh, she's like, well, you seem to know a lot about him. And uh, I choose to believe that Darkonda and Ecliptor are exes, and it went real bad. Uh, because Darkonda... Just really seems to enjoy fucking with Ecliptor, and Ecliptor keeps trying to like protect Astronema from him. But uh, Darkonda is basically already kind of winning her over because he's like, I've already taken out a Power Ranger, haha, uh, and I'm gonna deliver the rest of them to you to get on your good side. And then he just teleports away. Um, one of the things that's kind of funny about uh, Darkonda is his teleport animation is different. It's like a water ripple ripple effect, and yeah, for, it's, it's for, like he it's like he falls through a rift. Yes, to get to where he's going, and it's sort of implied, given that they don't know how he got on the ship, but every person in Power Rangers can teleport. That his teleport's like different in some way that I don't understand, because uh, they didn't know how he got there. But whatever, it's fine. It's because he's he's double super evil. So. Yeah, he's double super secret uh, evil. But uh, he, sh- um, Carlos sh- and uh, not Carlos, uh, uh, Andros and TJ uh, head down back down to the jungle planet's surface and like, okay, uh, I I want to confirm my suspicions about what's going on with Carlos, and they're trying to find the the dead bug from the bite. And yes. uh, Darkonda walks up holding the dead book. He's like, perhaps I have what you're looking for. Anyway, later, let's have a high-speed chase. Whee! Yes. Um, yeah. And this, this is great because he keeps doing this, like, he keeps darting around. It's it's kind of like a, a mix between his teleport move and, like, uh, a blurry, like, running, like, the flash effect. He, like, he goes, choo-choo-choo. Yes. Choo. He, like, just zigzags around everywhere. And the rangers are like, oh, fuck, we got to catch him. So they, they morph. And they come. They summon the uh, the galaxy gliders, and what we get is just straight up like a really low budget, uh, re- really low budget version of the um, of like the hover speeder chase from Return of the Jedi, uh, except the, yep, the speeder absolutely. bikes are, are yeah, except the speeder bikes are like chasing Sonic the Hedgehog. Like it's yeah, it's that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's it. Looks a lot better than you'd think based on the other Galaxy Glider stuff. I think this is actually kind of a cool sequence. It's, yeah, it's, no, this is a cool and fun sequence. It's it's its budget is definitely showing. Like you can, the green screen is blatant, but like in terms of like the cinematography and the fight choreography and like the way the action is planned and directed, like this is a fun sequence. This is a fun children's action show. Like chase sequence like i have i have no criticisms here this is great yeah there's a bit where uh tj jumps over uh, a branch and and as the uh glider goes under it and then he ducks under like another one and it just looks pretty cool honestly (laughs) like it's not bad (laughs) so for like uh for like a little ways into the fight uh durkanda releases another bug and it goes after tj and so the two of them get like split up because TJ's trying to chase away this bug. He's trying to, like, dodge it. He falls on his back, and so he's, like, riding around on his hoverboard, lying on his back, and he's in danger of crashing while he's, like, trying to knock this bug away from him. And so you get this bit where, like, 
Andros stops, hops off his uh, his his hoverboard, and like takes aim uh, to try and kill the bug without hitting TJ. And again, you know, w- within the bounds of being a low budget show for little kids, really well done sequence. Yeah, I, I last episode Luke was like, and and so last episode Mike was the grandma episode. Uh, yeah, and, and Luke was like, "Didn't everybody say that this was like them going for broke, even though they didn't have the budget? Where was that?" And uh, admittedly, that episode was pretty standard filler. But this is like, honestly, I know that they they clearly didn't have the money to do it, but they were fucking trying, and that's cool. Like, I'm glad they yeah. gave it a yeah. shot. <laughs> so, um, I really actually like that the there's there's just. I feel like there's just stuff that you don't see in Power Rangers that often in this episode. One of yeah. those things being the attention to detail of uh, Andros resting his hand on his other hand while he takes uh, aim to shoot this bug uh, and, and then nails it out of the eye. And it's just it's or out of the sky, rather. And it's just cool. Um, so they shoot yeah. this bug down. It's also worth noting, like. These these are really, really elaborate action sequences relative to what we normally get outside of the Sentai footage. Like, we're going to get, a, like, outside of the Zord fight, we're only going to get, like, five seconds of Sentai footage in this episode. Yeah, that's a good nearly, point. This is yeah, all nearly American. Everything, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nearly everything we're talking about is original footage. Um, speaking of which, so we're going to cut back to the uh, the mega ship. Oh, wait, and, real, real quick before we do sure. that. Uh uh, Andros explains that a bunch of these uh, attacked uh, his planet um, and people who got stung turned into bugs. And then we were able to fix a lot of it with some uh, some antidote, which might still be on KO-35. Uh, so we got to go back there. And Where did the rest of the people from KO-35 go? There's an episode... Where they go there, and and it's the episode where Andros gets his absolute shit kicked in by a clip tour, uh, and they say something about a disaster that happened there, and everyone left, but it is not clear. I don't remember if they made. Well, I mean, I, I know, I know it's been abandoned, but like, where'd they go? I don't know. Yeah, where did? Where, yeah, where did they go to? Ko thirty six. I, I don't know, Mike. <laughs> I mean, I guess that, that that feels like a weird thing to not answer because it's not like, yeah, it, it's just, I don't know. It, it's weird. Like there's, there's this, there's this evil federation, but presumably like the Power Rangers are, are organized in some way. Like Andros, like presumably isn't the only space Power Ranger. Right. It's, a, it's the something like, where like the, even the name KO35 implies some sort of like it plays you know, an organization. It, an it implies a numbering system. Yes, like, yes, you, exactly. Like I don't care. I don't care what weird alien numbering system you're using. You don't start at Ko thirty five, right? So some there has to be like a federation or, or you know something like that. That's yeah. Like if there, if everyone he, had to suddenly flee Ko thirty five, they fled to somewhere, right? And and. You know, Andros is alive. Where did, right. where did he grow up? <laughs> they, they don't go into it, but they do say KO-35 was a colony. So a colony from where? Who organized it? Like what, where? It, it is weird. That it, yeah. If they, if they gave, if they gave KO-35 a, a name instead of a number, it would have been called new what? <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 It's just weird because like you've got such. Uh, not like an insane amount of detail, but we know way more about the evil empire than the good guys. It, like, as far as we know, it's just Andros, but obviously that can't be the case. So, so who's everybody else? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the hell, the the fucking Phantom Rangers running around. What we still don't know his deal. It's it's very weird to have so much, r- relatively speaking. And like they don't need to explain everything because honestly, the show is really really does a bad job when they do explain everything. But it is weird to have so much information on the villains and none on just like regular people. It, like as much where do, even, where do the yeah. where do the alien human space civilians live? L- literally, all you would have to do is just be like the. Yeah, the the like fuck it, call it the Federation. Who cares? They're, they're you can't yeah. 
copyright that. Like, and like and listen, <laughs> he, he, sure that would undermine the tension of the episode. But you can just just have Andros say like, there'd be plenty of ant- antidote back on <laughs> Federation home planet, whatever. But like, that's too far away. It would be too late for Carlos. We right. need to just hope they have something on Ko thirty five because that's still relatively nearby. You know. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, it, it's just interesting that we don't get that. And, and as far as I know, never do. Uh, so in any case, um, Andrews calls up to the spaceship and, uh, to the mega ship and is like, Hey, Ashley, uh, and, and Cassie, I do need a quick favor. Please tie well, so, down. Well, so yeah, well, no, what's, what's great is that they, uh, and this, this is actually, uh, uh, some good, like time saving editing as opposed to. Like, usually the way this show, like, keeps the pace going and keeps things going quickly is by just, like, they they skip around too much. Like, they leave too much unexplained. But, like, this is a really good thing. Like, uh, Andros, like, finishes explaining how the bug works to TJ, and then he basically turns around, and then as soon as he puts his arm up to start talking, instantly he's on the monitor in front of uh, Ashley and Cassie going, and so that's why we have to, to you know, go to KO35. Like, he, like, it's just implied he explained it again, uh, and I like that. And again, that's giving the show a lot of credit for doing the bare minimum, but I do think it's a smooth cut. Yeah, so. it, it, it's nice. Um, so, uh, yeah, he, he basically is like, please, Cassie and Ashley, go ahead and tie Carlos down. Um, we, uh, yeah, we, we cut to Carlos at his moistest. Yes. He is so moist. Uh, again, I know that it is literally red and blue marker, but he looks gross. Like, it, it's it's effective. <laughs> In fairness, it's, it's, it's also the actor. He's doing this thing where, like, he's just staring bug-eyed and he's twitching his hand. Like, he's doing a good job of selling. Like, this is this is a person who is, is, is like, convulsing. Right. Uh, and what's great is so it, it shows him shaking. It shows his arm shaking. And then it pans over to a monitor that has, like, a a graphic of like a DNA strand getting all weird. Right. And then it pans back over and the actor has been replaced with the monster suit. Yeah. And you just see the hand at first and it's just like a gross red hand. Uh, And then they show up, uh, Cassie and Ashley show up and you just see Carlos from behind and you just see his hand like dripping goo. Uh, Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think the suit has like, ooze on it in the Sentai, I don't know. At least not any of the footage we see. But, like, they cover this thing in, like, fucking Nickelodeon yeah. gack or whatever. They, they really, like, wanted to make it gross. The The whole transformation, like, the, it, it, it's as gross as you can kind of get for a, ki- a little kid show, I feel like. Yeah. Um, well, they, they really wanted to make... Like, so, like, there have been times in the past where, like, a ranger has turned evil or a ranger has turned into a monster or... Or what have you. And usually it's just as goofy as any other magic things that happen in the show. They want this to be fucking sci-fi scary. Like, they yeah. they want like they want this to look horrifying. And, again, within the constraints of being a, a, a you know, low-budget show for babies, I think they sell it. Like, yeah. I, I, think, I think if I were 10, this would scare the shit out of me. Uh, most notably, <laughs> uh, Carlos, I guess, like beat up Alpha and the girls. Alpha's in the room. He just doesn't say anything. Uh, yes. And then just, like, he bursts into one of the vents off screen and just, like, now he's running around in the vents, fucking Xenomorph style. Yeah, th- this episode uh, is... And I I haven't seen a ton of uh, Star Trek, but, like, this episode gives me really strong Star Trek vibes of the stuff I have seen in that it's, like... It's taking advantage of the fact that it's set, at least this middle section of the episode, that it's set on on a small sh- ship and you have a thing that's escaped and like, you know, it's one of the crew and you're like, oh, where'd he go? And I, 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 it just has yeah. very strong Star Trek vibes. Obviously also alien, though it's not anywhere near yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of that. So like, <laughs> yeah, so... Uh... I mean, I think, I, I guess, doesn't that shit happen in, like, the later Aliens movies? Like, they start making, like, alien peoples? Why well, I mean, happen, or what have happened you? basically in the first one is, is but okay. yes, essentially. Uh, they, 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 yeah, so you see that he's busted into one of the vents and it's dripping goo. And they're like, all right, well, we got to find him. Yeah, and, so uh, the, the, the mega ship blasts off. It does, it does fucking hyperspace. Yes. Uh, we cut to the evil spaceship, whatever it's called, and uh, we see Elgar's like, I, oh, I've lost track of them, you guys. 
And then uh, Ecliptor, like, knocks Elgar away. He's like, I'll find him. And then Darkata, like, teleports in and is like, you don't bother, you don't need to bother looking for them. I know where they're going. Yes. And, yeah, he's like, I, they're looking for an antidote to the thing I done did to that Black Ranger. And the yes. only place around where it's going to be is KO-35. If you just head there first, we can uh, cut them off at the pass. Right. And then... Uh he, he, Darkonda does kind of a little bit of a power play and he's like, well, I, I thought I was unwanted. So why should I tell you where it is? And, uh, Ecliptor's like, that's right. You are get out of here. And then Astronomer's like, uh, excuse me. No, go ahead and tell me where the antidote is. Uh, and she even does like a little bit of a, like puts her hand on him at, kind of thing to try to get the information out of him. And, um, mm-hmm. he, she sends Darkonda to uh to get the rangers basically so she's asking him to do it instead of uh ecliptor um yeah. so here's co- here's right? where we get some fucking real shit again I, I, and i'm gonna sound like a broken record within the bounds of a low budget show for babies uh, this is some real shit yes because it's he ha- like each of the rangers they don't morph but they each take out their guns and like okay turn it to the lowest setting because we don't want to hurt him too badly we need to find carlos if he jumps you don't hesitate to shoot, because for the time being, that's not Carlos. Yeah. And we get these shots of uh, each ranger wandering around the ship uh, alone looking for Carlos. And it's kind of fairly tense. There's a, there is a, yeah, no, there, there's a solid like minute or two of just tension building. We're wandering around a dark, spooky ship shots. There is a one good goof I like, which is Ashley. Uh, is in the bridge and hears a noise and freaks out. And he's like, what's that? Uh, who's that? And uh, Decca goes, I am Decca, onboard computer. And she's like, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. Uh, um, but eventually they spot him and they chase him into the engine room. And there's a great bit where like, uh, oh, shoot, who is it? What, oh, Cassie is about to shoot him. And Andrews is like, no, don't. You'll hit the engine. Yeah, Which, and fair. You don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, she was, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, he, he jumps down and starts attacking people and gets into like a wrestle fight with Cassie yes. and bites her in the neck. And so now she's infected. Also, I'm sorry. I do have to say there is this bug monster, which looks, you know, fine. It's a big red bug, bug monster. Its head looks like a scorpion, which is kind of neat. Um, but it does use its bug monster powers of throw a barrel at Andros, which is very funny to me. <laughs> it's, it is very fun. <laughs> uh, and, but yeah, Cassie jumps on him. Uh, and I don't she, know if you know this, Zach, but uh, Donkey Kong is a bug monster. Oh, that's true. I didn't know that. Uh, but yeah, he bites her and then gets away and... Uh, they're freaked out because they're like. Uh, on the oh. one hand, like I, I like how like gross and freaky the, uh, the the bug bites that they put on Cassie's neck and like earlier Carlos's hand are. They do just look like nipples, though. This one really looks like a nipple. I was just like, wait, what? Hold on. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, but, what, if, what if that was the evil plan? It's like our monster is going to cover your entire body in nipples. Oh, You'll be God. far too sensitive to the touch to fight. <laughs> Jesus, awful. Uh, they strap Cassie down, uh, like we said they should have done earlier, and she's they're just sort of like. It'll be okay. We're it gonna go it get really is editor. something like out of a werewolf movie. It's like, yes. I'm, I'm going to turn, man. You got to tie me down. You got to lock me up. Though I will say that all these straps just have like seatbelt push, like the little, like you just push the button to release it, which doesn't seem super. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all the show could afford. Yeah. They couldn't um, afford like a real medical gurney or anything. But uh, TJ and Andros uh, head down to the tubes uh, to to go down to the planet um, in order to get uh, uh, the antidote. They are attacked on the way down by the uh, by Carlos Bug Monster, but they're able to get in the tubes and get away. Um, it does. I know that but before they go, Andros does give a speech to Ashley. He's like, "Listen, I I cannot reiterate this enough." If Carlos or 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 Cassie come at you, you have to shoot them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we we turned our ray guns down so it won't hurt them too badly. You you just don't hesitate. Just shoot them. 
Yeah, and then they, you know, leave Ashley on the ship with two, with one and a half bug aliens. Um, you know, why don't they give Alpha a gun? I feel like, like, listen, normally I get why you wouldn't, but in this scenario, I feel like you need to give Alpha might, a gun. Might be worth it in this specific case. Yeah. Um, I did have a quick question, which is that I don't understand why they have to use the tubes. They can teleport, but whatever, it's fine. There's a lot of... There's a lot of not teleporting when you probably ought to. Like, okay, there's there's a lot of that in in this whole franchise in general. Yes. In this season in particular, there is a lot of like, you should probably just teleport though. Like it's something we've we've talked about a lot, is like once you introduce the ability to just teleport at will, uh, into your like protagonist arsenal, you end up like running into a lot of situations where it's like, well, you can you kinda have to just like you have to just pretend they can't do that, otherwise you can't have fight scenes, you know? Right. But it gets especially bad in, in this season so far. Yeah. So they head uh, down to the uh, the medical building on KO35, which is a giant blue pyramid, which is pretty funny for some reason to me. Uh, it looks like the goddamn... Uh, what's that like? Is it the Bass Pro Shop that's shaped like a pyramid? Oh yeah, going. the you mean the uh, the base pro shop pyramid that was built by the uh, the dead pharaoh to uh, yes exactly to do the ritual. Yep. Uh, yeah. And like, uh, I, I don't know. I, listen, folks. I, I know a lot of you folks haven't uh, like maybe haven't listened to Idol on playtest. Uh, the base pro shop pyramid is a pivotal plot point. Yep. <laughs> in our podcast because that's just the kind of show we're making. It's pretty great. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it kind of looks like that, but it's blue. Uh, they run inside. We cut up to Ashley. Uh, and she's hearing a lot of like metallic scraping noises, uh, cut back down to them and, uh, they run inside and are, despite the fact that it's a giant medical building, immediately find one locker that they shoot open and it just has a box that's like, here's the medicine you need. (laughs) And you know, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, the uh, brilliant antidote. They've got it, uh, and also they, apparently you it, it it's you shoot a gun with yeah, it. It's an antidote gun. You know, don't worry yeah. about it. I mean, like when they first pull it out, I think okay, it's like an applicator. You like put it on there, and it like injects them. But like, no, apparently you can just shoot it from a distance. It yes. turns out, yeah. Which uh, you know what? If if the disease is turned into a ravenous killer bug monster. You probably want an antidote you can shoot, you know, True. now that I it's, think about it. It's so, like, uh, it's like fairness the, to the show. Like that makes sense, actually. Yeah. It's like how you've got like your raid bug spray, but, uh, but for like hornet's nests, it's like, no, use this thing that you shoot from a hundred feet away. We know, we know what you need. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But, uh, Darkonda attacks and, uh, Andros is like, all right, TJ, get out of here, take it. And I'll hold him off. And, uh, Which is actually really great because we get this thing where TJ like jumps up onto the railings of the stairs they came down to get to the room, mm-hmm. and like Darkata tries to just run past Andros to get to the stairs, and he like uh, grabs just, him. Like, yeah, yeah, he like wrestles him. It's it's real great. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, and then we cut to the only like on foot Sentai fight in this, and it's basically so you know how sometimes uh, in wrestling shows. Fights will just, you know, quote unquote, break out in the hallway backstage. <laughs> yes, yeah, it looks like that. That's yeah, yeah that's this scene. It's just a, they're just in a basement somewhere. It, it actually something happens in this episode that I haven't that I maybe I just stopped noticing it, but I actually think we just haven't seen it in a while. Remember in early Power Rangers where they'll just be fighting in, uh, like. In indoors, and then they'll jump, and then they're outside. Yeah, that happens in this, and I was that like, does oh, yeah. happen in this. I feel like I haven't seen that in a while. It's honestly kind of surprising to stop and think about it because that shit just happens all the time in Toku. Yeah, totally. Like you don't even th- you don't even think about it. You f- you fight in the one common rider warehouse, and then somebody gets kicked, and then suddenly you're outside under the one common rider bridge. I imagine it might be just a function that there's been more and more American footage as they've continue the show probably yeah yeah but yeah so they're outside and there is a there is a good uh bit before we go outside where uh darkata uses his like teleport magic to like to like he'll he'll run and hit andros along the way and then teleport and it's like 
it's like he's Pac-Man going off one side of the screen and coming back on the other side over and over and over again. And like, so that's kind of fun. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, they they fight for a little bit more and then go outside. Andros summons his And also bat- the sword gets big again just because, you know. Yes, it's an extendo sword. Andros mm-hmm. summons his battleizer, which uh, previously has only been used to remote control the uh, uh, Delta Megazord. Um, but this time he uses it to make like a power punch. His whole hand glows and uh yeah y'all talked about how this like this was different from other battleizers because it didn't give the red ranger extra powers but like it it does it just doesn't give him anything like on his body other than the wristband it just makes him punch good when he pushes the butts and buttons so the later battleizers like add additional armor to the costume or, or other things like that uh, this one just gives you some good old fashioned rotoscope power lightning to punch with, and it's it, it's it, cool. Hey, harkening back to earlier conversations, it you push a button and you can falcon punch. Exactly, it's a falcon punch button, um, and it looks pretty cool. I I kind of miss that stuff. So, and just like me in Super Smash Brothers, he lands the one falcon punch and then immediately goes for a second one. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Unlike um, me, though, he lands the second he, yeah, one. He, he gets both. Uh, we cut back up to Ashley, and uh, there, this is actually, pre- again, for kids' show, like, kids' creepy, for sure, which is that uh, there is a disturbance in the infirmary. Ashley looks over at the camera and sees that uh, Cassie has ripped out of her uh, restraints, and then she turns and sees that uh, the door of the uh, uh, the cabin is being like it, it's like one of those it's a, you know it's a Star Trek door it closes it's from a Star the top. Trek door it's, like it open yeah, yeah yeah it slides upward yes but like no they're they're lifting from the bottom and trying to pry the doors open yes and there's uh, there's two of them and they're coming in for both doors and Ashley's kind of freaking out and they finally get inside. And she's like, don't, don't make me shoot you. Uh, and, you know, she she's like, please stop, stop, stop. And uh, then she does shoot, or, or sorry, this is when TJ shows up and he shoots both of them with the antidote. Uh, again, it is a gun. <laughs> yeah. But like the, I, I do like that bit where, like, you know, Alpha and, and, and Ashley are cornered and she, like, she keeps hesitating. She keeps trying to be like, Carlos... Cassie, it's me. Don't you know it's me? And it is worth it to know that, like, in a life or death situation where you have to pull the trigger, Ashley does not have it in her to do what needs to be done, straight up. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> she just does not. <laughs> um, so that happens. Uh, they 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 morph back uh, or, or change back to humans. Uh, and then immediately they're like, all right, guys, now we do need to... I know you were just aliens, uh, but you do need to morph and we got to go fight. So come on, yeah. let's Car- go. Carlos is straight up like, well, what happened? And they're just like, we'll explain later. We got to go. <laughs> yeah, don't even worry about it. Um, so they morph and come down to help Andros, who is... I mean, do, he's been doing fine, but, you know, uh, needed a little bit of help, obviously. Um, Darkanda is like... Ha, ah, finally, you're all here. Now I can watch, make you watch as I destroy the rest of the antidote. And he pulls out, I guess, the rest of the antidote. It's one vial. And yeah, he, I guess there was a third one. And he throws Question it on mark? the ground and smashes it. And this is pretty funny because Andrus is like, okay. Um, I mean, we don't need it anymore. We already <laughs> cured everybody. And he's like, oh, did you? And he's got a fourth bug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's pretty funny. It's it, like... It's just funny because they're like, "We okay, fine, we don't care." And then he's like, "Oh yeah," <laughs> and they all like freak out. Um, but yeah, he throws it up in the air, cuts it again. You get a re- reprise, uh, but this time it just turns into one of those bugs instead of. Uh, yeah, it's the same monster suit that the that yes. Carlos and and Cassie turned into. Uh, and like I, uh, do they do they fight much before growing it? No, no, he just grows no, immediately. No, so. no, he just immediately grows him. Uh, and so they got to go get the Megazord. And, uh, I mean, it's fine. I love that the Megazord does the fucking, like, 
Neo from the Matrix, like, come here hand motion at yes. the monster. Yeah, that's Except true. Except he does it all slow and mechanical because he's a robot, so yeah. that's great. Yeah. Uh, you know, once, the thing is, though, like, you're going to make him big. You got to understand that then they're just going to get in their robot and you can't bite the robot. So, like, his primary, like, scary thing doesn't matter so much now. Well, so, um, far as I can tell, probably, and, and again, have not seen the episode, haven't even read the summary. Probably this monster's deal in the Sentai was that he was, like, really good at fighting games or something, because he starts moving really fast, and we see Andros, like, wiggle these joysticks really fast, like, the whole thing's yes. like, oh, I gotta move so quick, I gotta move so quick, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta avoid everything he's doing, and then he, like, suddenly catches him with, like, an elbow move yeah. real quick, he's like, he's like, aha, here's my chance. Yeah, like so, I, I, I feel like that's what's going on in the episode. Is like it had nothing to do with like bug monsters. It's just like this dude's. I, I, I'm. He's he's a fast video game opponent, I guess. Um, and yeah, so they they summon the sword and they just they cut the monster up real good, and that's that. Yeah. Um. So at that point, uh, we cut up to the dark, uh, dark fortress, and Ecliptor is like. Ha ha, you failed, and because I don't like you, you only get one chance as opposed to 50 like we do. <laughs> uh, and Darkonda's like, nope, uh, we actually won. Uh, we learned that the Red Sp- Red Ranger is the only true Space Ranger, and if we separate him from the others, they'll fall apart. Question, what? <laughs> what, did, how did, what? what are you talking about? Well, so he... He's clued into the fact. I I feel like Astronomer could have just told him this, uh, but Andrus was the only one who knew anything about like the bug or the antidote or anything like that. So I th- I think his thing is he's figured out. Okay, Andrus is really the only one who's like who knows his way around a fucking planet. Yeah, I mean that's true. So, the other rangers the, are. The thing is, yeah, and and like the the thing is, on the one hand, that's kind of cool conceptually and correct. On the other hand, it really is just the a shtick we've heard from basically every villain every season is Oh yeah. Aha, if you if you if you get the leader, the team will fall apart. Wow. And it's like I, I yeah, that's I guess that's how it works, broadly speaking, sure. Yes. I, um, I guess Andros is the leader, question mark. Yeah. Uh so we cut to uh Andros uh, holding his amulet that I think has a picture of Corona in it. I can't remember exactly. Uh, it it has like a CD or something in it, I think. Yes. And he yeah, is... He's, stand, he's standing on a rooftop staring off into the distance. I guess he's still in KO-35. And, yeah. uh, he's. You know what? Here's the weird thing. Mm-hmm. This place still has a ton of buildings and infrastructure that seem to be intact. And the Rangers keep coming here. And like, yeah, sometimes like Ecliptor or whoever will set up an ambush for him. Broadly speaking, there doesn't seem to be any danger here. They're just hanging out. I really don't. Why, have, why yeah. haven't any of the KO 35ians tried to move back in? I, like I said, I, it was very like vague what happened. I, but like, even last time they were here, it looked fine. It's just it was abandoned, and I don't know what the problem yeah. is. <laughs> and I mean, we know that that's because, like, in actuality, like both in the Sunday footage and American footage, they're just filming like regular ass buildings, right? In regular ass places, but like, yeah, what this place seems fine. Right. Like, wh- where did everybody go? Yeah, it's a little strange. Why don't they come back? So he re sees his uh, sister get taken, uh, but this time you see again uh, that it was Darkonda. Um, he yeah, he, they still try and be subtle about it. He's behind the bushes. I yes, I'd imagine if you were a little kid, you might not piece it together. Yeah, but, um, sorry, uh, Ashley comes out and is like, what's wrong? And he's like, I'm thinking about my sister. Last time I saw her, she was right over there in that park. Uh, and I think I'm really close to finding her. And, uh, yeah, she's like comforting him. She's like, I hope so. Right. And then, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I think so too. And, and again, they're still trying to keep it kind of secret, but like, if you'd have watched a mo- <laughs> they, television. It, if you've very watched obvious, television, yeah, that it's yeah. astronomer. If you know how fiction works, yes. Uh, but that is the episode. I do want to briefly uh, say that there is an outtake in which uh, 
they they're looking for the medicine and the and they've just stocked that uh, cabinet with like a bunch of bottles and one of them says stud on it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just very funny. And uh, is that why they had to reuse the take? They're just like, oh, mm. I don't know. And wow. Andros picks it up and says, hey, I've been looking for these. And that's an outtake. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> is that like dick pills? I don't understand the joke Excuse that they me? just made. Like, yeah, I don't understand what this is supposed okay, to be. Okay, hold on, hold on. Parent just has officially introduced it, so now this isn't me being weird. Now this is me extrapolating from the information I've been given. What does Andrus's junk look like? Well, he's a human. He said he's but a he's human. He's a weird alien human who, who knows telekinesis. I mean... He grew up on a space colony. Maybe... But, like, potent- we're, potentially we're talking about, like... You know, thousands of years of divergent evolution were like, yeah, technically they're both human, but they're slightly different humans. Maybe he's got two dicks. Why stop at two? You know, what you, <laughs> listen, listen, Zach, you need you need to you need to imagine a bit bigger, all right? You need to you need to fucking expand your horizons here. Uh yeah. I mean, but <laughs> maybe it's ten dicks. But yeah, that I just that made me laugh. I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, the episode's fun. It's, it's, you know, the, the, my favorite episodes of this show so far this season have been the ones that lean more into the kind of kids Star Trek-y elements of it and not as much the Power Rangers yeah, stuff. The, the ones that lean more into what's actually unique about this season. Yeah. Right. And, uh, I think this one does that pretty well. And also I think it's neat to introduce another villain that, uh, that like kind of doesn't get along with the rest of the villains and you don't really know i don't know if they'll do anything interesting with it but like you don't really know why he's there because what like what is he getting out of it basically so it's kind of i don't know it's interesting i don't remember shit I mean, about I get- him in the I, i'm pretty sure i've seen this season but i really don't remember Darkonda. so we'll see i, I guess we'll find out yeah uh, so that's it for the episode. Um, I have questions, but I think I want to wait until we get some people, some more people, and we can do a little bit more of a discussion on them. Uh, sure. So with that, Mike, is there anything you'd like to plug? Yeah, uh, Idle on Playtest. It's what I've been so busy with, and you should listen to it. It It's real it good. fucking rules. Yeah, I'm real proud of it. Um, you can also find me on Twitter, at Mike Loves Rabbit. Yeah. Uh, and you can find me at Chinchi McChilla on Twitter, and I just talk about random shit, but I will also plug, uh, Eidolon. It's real good. Also, check out the other, uh, podcasts on audioentropy.com. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff on there. We've got other actual play podcasts. Uh, we've got, uh, oh man. Eric, help, Eric, just put in, you know, some good podcasts here that we have that my brain is completely forgetting. Please, thank you. Here's a list of podcasts. Carmen may have listened to Transmission Radio. USA. D-Comedy. USA. Gotcha Journalism. USA. War and Beast. Canada. Strangers Fiction. Totally Reprise. USA. Queer Formers Animated except on the webpage it's listed under Let's Steal a Podcast. Virginia! Idol on Playtest. Let's go to the... Zach. I feel good! Come back next week, uh, because we get a TJ-focused episode, and I think he might still be my favorite of this crew, so that'll oh, be cool. fun. Uh, and until then, for Teenagers with Attitude, I've been Zach. And I've been Mike. And may the power protect you always. That is maybe the smoothest uh, 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 like sign-off has ever gone. Yeah, if there's only two of us, we can do it. <laughs> <laughs>